Hi everybody, how are you doing today? I am here to show you how I finish a pillow by hand. Now, before we even get started, I want to preface that I am a beginner at this. So anything I do is how I do things. It might not be the right way, but this is how I have learned to do things and I have been asked to do it, do this video to show how I have done my pillows to help those who do not have a sewing machine. So please keep that in mind whenever you go to add comments at the bottom of the screen to understand that this is how I do things and you may have a different opinion or a different way of doing it. Now, prior to me talking, you saw me prepping some of my work just so that I don't have to, um, just so I'm ready to go here. But I first wanted to go through the things that you will need in order to to do, to uh, finish, to um, make a fully finished pillow. The first things you will need are your stitched piece, a piece of fabric for backing. I am actually going to use the same linen that I used for the stitching. This is a 36 count royal purple linen hand dyed by Stephanie. You will need Uh, fusible, what is this called even? Fusible interfacing. I am using number 911FF, 911FF. It comes on a bolt. You already saw me pre-cut it. <clears throat> also, we will need pins. So I have ball head pins here, sharp needles, thread. I prefer using a light gray, a light to medium gray because it blends in pr with pretty much all most colors so that you really won't see it if your th if your stitching does show a little bit because I prefer the look of a pillow without cording or embellishments around the edging. But that is your preference. You can use any color thread you want. I prefer using the gray because it blends in well. I have cut my fabrics on a uh, uh, self-healing mat along with a ruler and a rotary cutter. <clears throat> you can also use a good pair of fabric scissors. Now I also utilize my iron and ironing board which is in the other room. I'm not going to show you that. I think you all know what an iron and ironing board look like. And that is oh and as well you will also need a um, fiber fill. This I have a basic polyfill fiber fill. for what I'm using. <clears throat> and that is everything you need. Now, I have pre-cut everything to the size that I prefer. I have um, cut one inch margins around this, the, the finished piece. So one inch from the edge of all the stitching. And I have measured the same size for my backing piece. My interfacing is slightly smaller than the piece of than the piece that I will be securing it to just so that it does not um, it makes it a little bit easier to whenever I'm stitching through the edges or actually um, stitching together. <clears throat> Uh, 
FYI, this is a pattern on my Etsy store. This is crown and cross or cross and crown, one of them. Uh, it is available for sale on my Etsy page. Okay, so the first thing we are going to do is go ahead and secure the, the interfacing to the the back of the, the so the wrong side of the 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 finished side um, the linen you're going to want to ensure that the the interfacing has two two textured side uh, sides and as you can see on on the video the smooth side is going to be the side that you want up the rough side is going to be the side that you want touching the fabric. So I'm going to line that up and go ahead and pin. Okay, and now we are ready to go ahead and iron on the interfacing to the, the, the linen. So I'm going to go into the other room and iron this on with, what I do is I place a wet cloth over top of the interfacing and then use a seam iron to adhere the, the interfacing to the linen. And I will be back in a moment. As you can see, we now have the interfacing secured to the back of the, 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 the linens. So we can now take out the, the pins. Of course, as we are, as you secure the, um, the interfacing to the the linen you have to use or to the fabric you have to use a little bit of of liquid water or steam to ensure that the the glue from the interfacing adheres to the to the 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 fabric so you do want to be very careful and watch as you are uh as you are ironing that if you are using a hand dyed or specialty dyed linen fabric or fabric or threads that you are very careful that you know you might run the risk of bleeding so just be very careful with that okay so now, at this time, we are ready to pin the wrong sides together. So we have the two sides. The, the finished sides will be on the inside, and I will pin these together because this is how we will sew the pillow together.
Okay, and now I will get my needle. I think I'll use one of this length. Now I take lots and lots of, of thread for the, for the stitching because I want to ensure that I have enough to go the entire length of the side before I run out. And I also double up. So what I end up doing is... Now I had a because I like a little bit of added extra oomph to my thread. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the needle in the center of the the loop of the thread and then I am going to tie a knot on the other end with the other two Okay. Okay, what I'm going to do is I use the stab method. I went all the way through the, the two pieces of fabric and I am secure with that knot. I'm going to, and then I'm going to work my way back in as straight of a line as possible and you just have to be careful keeping there we go And I basically just do a back stitching type stitch the entire way across the side. So what I'm going to do first is go all the way across back here, almost like how you would do a, a sewing machine. How a sewing machine, you go forward and then go back just to uh, secure that edge. And then I'm going to go all the way across to the other end. stop the video because I had gotten a knot in the thread and had to unknot it so as you can see I went ahead and finished the row the whole way or the side the whole way across 
And for me, it's not perfectly straight across. It's not going to be because it's hand stitched. Usually when things are hand stitched, it's not always perfectly across and that's fine with me because it gives it uniqueness. Um, but as you can see, I went the whole way across and then I tied it off. Now I have the next one ready to go. So now I'm going to start the next row and I'm going to start again in the corner. I'm going to go just like the first row, uh, the first side and I'm going to go the whole way across and then I will tie it off. I will go do all, th all three of the sides and then on the bottom I will do once uh, in one quarter of the way in one quarter of the way and I will leave the central the center half open so that I can uh, turn it inside or turn it right side out so I'm going to do that and then I will be back to show you I will do that and then I once I have it turned right side out I will press it one more time just because since I'm handling it with my hands it does get pretty wrinkled and then I will be back to show you how I stuff it. Okay, as you can see, I now have my stitch piece uh, right side, flipped right side out. It is not completely perfect, and I'm okay with that. You can see my corners are not 100% perfectly square. But that's what you're going to get whenever you do a, uh, it's it's not always going to be perfect whenever you hand stitch it. At least for me, because I am not a perfect hand stitcher. As you can see, I have my opening ready to go here. The first couple stitches are a little loose there, where you can see. Um, and that's fine because whenever we go to close, whenever I go to close that, I will be able to... Um, tighten that up nicely. So now I am going to go ahead and I have my my chopstick. These are I don't have wooden ones. I have metal ones I got whenever I bought whenever I was living in Korea that I use and I am going to start stuffing fiber fill. So first thing I do is I take it and I, I do just like Vana does, and I, what is this, wafting, is that what they what it's called? So I always just make sure I fluff it up nicely before I go ahead and start stuffing it into the hole. And this is going to be a little difficult with the way I am sitting here. So I am going to go ahead and do this off camera. And I will come back and show you my um, how I go ahead and close up the hole. Okay, so I have my pillow stuffed the way I like it. I am now going to go ahead and close up the hole of my pillow. So I'm going to stuff this down just a little bit farther so I have a little bit of wiggle room to work with of, on the li uh, linen. And I started my thread, so I threaded a needle with a piece of thread, the gray thread. I went ahead and knotted it, and then I started a little bit farther back where my stitches started here. <clears throat> I knotted it and then I poked it through the underside of the one side. Now I'm going to carefully, and this is going to be a challenge doing it on film just because of the way I have to hold it. I want to fold the linen. Just like so. Sorry, I keep forgetting where the camera is. Now, the, on this purple, the, the thread does show up a little bit. I may go ahead and put a cording on this one. I'm not sure. A gold cording might, might look nice on this pillow. I haven't decided yet. And I'm just going to carefully 
ladder stitch, I believe is what it's called. Take a little bit on each side and pull it snug. <clears throat> and I'm going to keep doing that the whole way across. And I like to do them close together just to make sure that they have that they're nice tight seam but I'm going to have a challenge doing this on air so I'm going to do this off and I will come back and show you and ladies and gentlemen here is my finished pillow as you can see, there is my closed in hole where I filled the pillow. Again, my stitching is not perfect. Again, I am not horribly concerned about that. You can see the, the bottom is slightly lopsided for me. Again, I do not necessarily concern myself with that. I am quite happy with the way my pillow looks. So, again, this was this tutorial is only to show those individuals who are interested in learning how to how I made a hand sewn pillow without the use of a sewing machine. I ask that you please understand that this is just one way of doing it. I am not a professional finisher and am fairly new at doing pillows by hand as this is only my third one that I've done. So I am not perfect and that I ask you to please keep, uh, keep that in mind when posting comments below. I hope those of you who were looking forward to this get something out of this at least a tip, a trick, a skill, just or just an idea uh, uh, to see how I personally do it. And you take something away that you might be able to utilize in your path to finishing. I do believe I'm probably going to put a cording around this one just to give it a little bit more finishing. I'm thinking maybe a metallic gold cording would look really nice. Finish it off. So with that being said, I hope you enjoy it. Like, subscribe, and comment. And if you have any other questions regarding my finishing, please let me know below. And I will see you on the next episode video. And don't forget to always be creative.